any of us will come out with a rotting mouth to come and be condemning PDP for which we are president for eight years. That gave you a platform from prison. A man, when we saw the picture when Obasanjo was released by General Absalom, we would not allow such a man to sit beside you. But the same man is coming, I, I'm opening the library. My 10 million naira is part of his library. We were made to pay 10 million naira as governors in 2005. And I've listened to him, he turned that money over. How <laughs> can Nigerians be celebrating a corrupt man? Corrupt man! He's the worst ever. Worst ever. He should put interest on that 10 million naira. I contributed 10 million. I stand to be corrected. Of you are afraid of what? When you are saying, so don't do like this. Obasan don't do what? His time has come and gone. We are in the center of the business now. We are in governor now. Where is it? Things that are to do with bad governance. So um, the average Biafran, to use your phrase, or Igbo man in the Igbo, um, is facing poverty much in the same way that the average guy in your base state is facing poverty. And so these are issues of governance. You don't agree with that? I agree completely. Okay. So if that is it, why isn't the agitation about tackling the problem, which is ensuring good governance, perhaps starting from locally? Because part of the allegations against you is that you don't confront your political leaders in the East and you'd like to blame Abuja for everything. Mm -hmm. Because the way I would want to solve a problem is not how a full animal would want to solve it. You really believe I, this is I, an ethnic thing and ethnic. the approach is different? No, the approach is different. No, it's not ethnic. It is more to do with value system. Right. The way you may want to solve a problem could be markedly different from how I do mine. What is the geographical uh, makeup of Biafra as far as you are concerned? This Biafra that you want. So for example, if we're doing a referendum, where will that referendum take place? Is it only the five? It's on, no. It's okay. It's on, which is River State by Elsa, Delta, Anambra, Imo, Enugu, Eboi. Cross River. Aquaibon? And Aquaibon, of course. Aquaibon, yes. right. Those are the coasters. Basically. By Elsa? Yes. Southeast and South South without Edo State. Without Edo State. That's correct. And then including Igeda, Idoma. Right, the Benways. So That's the correct. Igalas and part of the Absolutely. part of the Kogi yes. Kogi yes. State, right? Yeah. Niosom Wike. The mm -hmm. governor of Anamba, sorry, the governor yes. of River State, yes. made a statement. I think it was yesterday or day before yes, yesterday, yes, and said, you know, you should not be including River State it's for and the people. River State to people. Decide, not him. I can't decide for Biafrans. They have to go and vote and convince the whole world that they want Biafra. It's not for him. It's only one man. One man, one vote. The, what if they're not even willing to take part in the referendum? Because I've had people from the South South, for example, from Bielsa, I've had people from Cross River. I think um, there's a famous um, actress, Kate Henshaw, for example, mm -hmm. wrote a long piece about why people of the South South don't want to be dragged into a place called Biafra. You're saying, regardless of what they say, you want a referendum in those parts? Because I know the majority of the people want a referendum. I was in Iguacha yesterday. How do you know? I was there yesterday. I was in Iguacha yesterday. You called Port Harcourt. I was there yesterday. I should have been there to see what happened. Now, they were delighted to see me. I'm sure you know that. It's all over the place. They're very happy to see me. I bet Kate Henshaw wouldn't get such reception. Where she to go to? She's a big, popular Nollywood actress. I wouldn't necessarily. I, I can, no, I wouldn't I'm telling you, if I go to her village, Mm. People will turn out to see me, but I'll turn out to see her. I was speaking there to the head of IPOM, Namdi Kanu, and for details of how you can watch the full interview, you can check out my uh, Twitter handle at Kedria Ahmed. You can also join the conversation on the channel's Twitter handle, which is at Channels TV. Again, my Twitter handle at Kadria Ahmed, or on Facebook at Channels Forum.
the hashtag you need in order for us to be able to pick up your questions and comments and share them on this program is hashtag NG the core. Now, I want to come to you, Celestine, because in that interview with Mr. Kanu, he was very clear about um, the portions of Nigeria that he considers part of Biafra. And he talked about the South-South. So specifically, when it comes to this particular call for independence for Biafra that includes states and areas that cover um, some of the places that you come from and the people you represent, what is your reaction? Well, I think one of the greatest problems this country has right now is that we are operating under a cost because we still, <laughs> this country still too much. The money that is being spent in this country is the stolen money. The oil that is being sold every day, stolen oil. Because in Ogoni, where I come from, our means of livelihood have been destroyed completely. We can no longer fish. We can no longer farm. We don't have good health. People can no longer go to school. Just tell me the offense that cancer were committed. That. Just give me a fair share of what you are taking from my land. And the man was just marching to the gallows and killed. 96 oil wells in Ogoni, five oil fields, nothing to show for you. Every weekend is buried. Then, now, coming to Monday, the man is crying that um, the Igbos are being marginalized, that they are beginning to enforce them, and you want to come and steal my state. <laughs> Without coming, have, have, you, have, you you, have you ever said, if you want to save a man, you, you, you bring him down and save his head. You can't save my head in my absence. Nandi cannot stay in Nanambara or wherever you come from. To Mark Ogoni is my territory. It just is my territory. Who told him that? So I think that he um, just, um, just made, make his statements. He, he, he did make a point, which was that if there is a referendum, it will be one man. Referendum one will not vote. happen in River State. Go, I'm not on, the governor of River on. State, but it will not happen. No, but I know that. If we are confident about our belief that the people that he says see themselves as part of Biafra do not, why not test it with the referendum? Well, I'm not against the referendum. Me, I want to structure it. Because River State, where I come from, Ogoni is the majority. We are not minority, but you won't believe that since the creation of River State, no Ogoni have been governor. No going to be deputy, no going to be speaker, no going to be chief judge. We have qualified, overqualified people. So why? How? Your commissioner for information. <laughs> <laughs> so how? How did that happen? So I need, I need restructuring. But uh, if it is for Biafra, referendum will not happen in River State. That I'm sure. Professor Chief, I, 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 I am listening to him, and the phrase you uttered earlier just comes to mind again. A, a country where it's all about sharing yeah. and not productivity. It continues to be an issue, isn't it? This idea of the resources that we have, which happen to be in the Niger Delta, and everybody wanting a piece of that action, so to speak. Frankly, if we don't rebase our political economy on productivity and not sharing, we are doomed. And we are, we are doomed within a generation. You can see it. Why? Our demographic curve far outstrips the pace of our economy to catch up. Our population is growing at about 3% or a little above that. We are still in negative economic growth territory. So we are not producing enough to be able to catch up with the number of babies we are reproducing. Okay? And so what's going to happen? At the moment, our debt burden is growing at a pace we cannot keep, we cannot service. In less than one generation, we will not be able, there will be no schools for the kids, no hospitals for the pregnant mothers, no food to feed anybody, no salaries to pay the workers, and we have to change. There's not enough to share. So we've got to start doing production. In the political economy of the First Republic, production and competitive production was the basis. You, and so people could talk about the peanut pyramids and the palm oil. And indeed, when you go to the southeast of Nigeria, you still see the kids selling cashew. And you see the oil palm plant plantations. All that was done by who? Michael Obara in the First Republic. Uh, you look at what happened. In 1959, Awolowo created the WNBC in Ibadan. And what was the payoff line? First in Africa. Correct? Mm -hmm. And what followed? Second to none, Eastern Nigeria Television. Now, that told you there was competition in productivity. And I think we can recreate that country in which 
there is pride in the person in Yobe about what they produce and they can bring it to the country. And the person in Kebi, and now you're seeing rice coming from Kebi. You, you see the person from Lagos, you see the person from Enugu. And all of us bring something to the Federation. And not this destitution of every Nigerian. And it's that destitution of all of us that brings the notion of popularization and marginalization. We can change it. Now, Odia, let me bring you in here because, I mean, we can't run away from the fact that Nigeria isn't working. It really isn't. 50 years after independence and nobody is happy. You know, there are those who are sort of uh, shouting louder than others. Um, we have minorities within the south-south, within the southwest, in the north. North Central is an issue. We have Middle Belt, all of that. And, and we sort of have talked about, it's 50 years of independence, trying this, trying that. And Namdi said it's too late. And that actually maybe the solution is to allow people to just decide for themselves and move away. What do you think, given the level of failure? Given the level of failure, we... For the leadership of Ohanese village, I was elected as President General of Ohanese, along with 16 other members of the National Executive Committee to lead our organization for the next four years. Our mandate was profound and humble. We are grateful to Ndivo for the enormous trust and confidence which they have reposed in us. Nigerians of all ethnic nationalities have joined us to celebrate the outcome of this election. They have congratulated us for holding a peaceful election and for voting in an improved quality of representation from all Igbo speaking areas. Let me therefore congratulate the last National Executive Committee of Mohanesi, led by Chigari Igariwe, for putting together this successful exercise. In particular, I'd like to place on record our gratitude to the Electoral Committee, <coughs> led by Professor Anya Owanya and Professor ABC Musu, for a transparent and credible. Equally commendable is the complete unanimity of all the governors in all Igbo speaking areas in supporting the just concluded elections and ensuring effective representation of their various states at the General Assembly. I acknowledge with thanks and the messages of congratulations we received from other socio cultural organizations and prominent Nigerians including but not limited to our friend Ferry, Arewa Consultative Forum, PANDEF, Chief Edwin Clark, General Abdul Salami Abubakar, Alaji Atiku Abubakar, Governor Lee Elimoke, His Eminence John Cardinal Amarekon, Archbishop Matthew Cooker, and Governor Obon Victor Atta. Of notable mention, is the unanimous solidarity of the Southeast Caucus of the National Assembly, led by Deputy Senate President, Distinguished Senator Ike Ikorimaru. We thank them most sincerely. More important, I cannot fail to acknowledge the timely and cheering congratulations of His Excellency the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, <coughs> President Mohamed Buhari. Mr. President, in his message of congratulations, expressed his readiness to work with the new Ohanese leadership. We salute the President for his kind hand of fellowship. At the time, we will have great concern about their participation and treatment in the Nigerian states. This hand of fellowship offered by Mr. President, I believe, will enable us to engage him meaningfully and find an early resolution to our extant misgivings. Ndibo in today's Nigeria face many problems. Under the current federal government, Igbo representation is abysmal and falls extremely short of the constitutional provisions for the reflection of federal character in the appointment into important government positions. No arm of government, namely the executive, judiciary, or legislature, is headed by an Igbo. No section of the armed forces or paramilitary organization is headed by an Igbo. Neither the Supreme Court, Court of Appeal, 
before the Federal High Court is headed by an evil. We know more from the history of this country when the Lieutenant Colonel was appointed to the position of Chief of General Staff over and above his superiors just to ensure every balance. We know when a Minister of Justice and Attorney General of the Federation was appointed Chief Justice of Nigeria just to ensure every balance. We know when a former military head of state was drafted to run for president just to douse ethnic tensions. What is very perturbing is the public declaration of Mr. President that his appointments must favor the states that voted overwhelmingly for him and those he trusts, even against the provisions of our constitution relating to federal character. One is at sea why people who campaigned and voted for Mr. President appear not to be trusted. No wonder he defied the zoning structure of his party and appointed a new, a non-Igbo man as Secretary to Government of the Federation. No wonder the ministries with lean capital votes are the ones assigned to Igbo. No wonder he nominated ambassadors for confirmation to the National Assembly, naming three ambassadors for some states and only one ambassador for each of the Igbo states. No wonder one year and eight months into his tenure as president, he has not visited any of those things. While we bemoan this patently discriminatory treatment of people in appointment into political positions, addressing of capital projects is perhaps more pathetic. No railway construction is going on in the world. The Enugu Port Harcourt and Enugu and Ita Expressways have become national embarrassments. State governments in Igbo states now rehabilitate federal roads in Igbo land from their lean budgets so as to keep alive mobility of factors of production in our region. Whereas 70% of power generated in China is from coal and 40% of America's power is from coal, the coal in Enugu, which is a federal resource, continues to lie unexploited. The United States continues to bring up the rear in federally collected resources in spite of its mineral endowments of salt and lead. To make matters worse, on Tuesday, the 25th of October 2016, the President presented a $29.9 billion three-year external borrowing plan to the National Assembly, which will potentially raise our total external debt to $41 billion in three years and raise our debt to GDP ratio from 13.2% to 20.7% without considering it fit to allocate a single project in this external borrowing plan to the southeast. The economic strangulation of Ndibo has over time been perpetrated by the confining of mainland Ndibo to five states. Every other geopolitical zone in Nigeria has six to and seven states respectively. Of the 774 local governments in the Federation, just three northern states have more local governments than the whole of the South is put together. Under this lopsided structure of the Nigerian states, the commonwealth of the country continues to be distributed using states and local governments as parameters, whilst any talk about restructuring of the Federation is clearly not on the present agenda. The peaceful coexistence Previously existing between peace loving Fulani herdsmen who headed their cattle with long kings and our local farmers has been replaced by an era of AK 47 30 and one paging herdsmen who kill, maim, rape our people and destroy our farms. Not one of them is ever arrested for illegal possession of firearms. Even those arrested in Nimbu for mercilessly killing our people remain unprosecuted by the northern-dominated law enforcement agents. A picture of the Orwellian animal farm, where all farmers, all animals are equal, but some, how, some animals are more equal than others, is painted. In Lagos State, after the threat of throwing our people into the lagoon during the last elections, it has become habitual for the Lagos State government hiding under the pretext of urban renewal and development to wantonly demolish shops and business premises of Ndibu all around Lagos. This happens notwithstanding the fact that a sizable percentage of the economy of Lagos State was built on free will investment of Ndibu. 
I must at this juncture salute two eminent traditional rulers in Northern Nigeria who have spoken up for them. His Eminence, the Sultan of Sokoto, whilst calling for the release of Unna and the capital last year, praised the contributions of Unibo in Sokoto and described them as no advisor. His Highness, the Earl of Kano, in a celebrated speech, spoke of the unwritten agreement between the North and the West to keep Unibo down as a result of the first coup and the war and wants that this agreement must be reviewed as the Indigo who are now being punished and likely those who did not participate in the war. This brings me to the rise of Masson and Aiko. Both organizations, no matter how divided they appear in public, are basically motivated by the same sense of outrage and bitterness. Our young men and women can no longer tolerate a second home status in their own country. And no longer forgive the president for arguing before he came into office that neither Delta militants were meekly treated and tolerated by President Yaradua, while Boko Haram was harshly treated by President Jonathan. When his own law enforcement agents literally opened fire and maim and kill unarmed Masoch and Ivo members. They see how returning Boko Haram members are absorbed and exploited while leaders of Mapop and Ipop are incarcerated and mercilessly murdered. In their rage, they are becoming uncontrollable as they pass a vote of no confidence on us, their parents, describing us as cowards and compromised. Because the, old, uh, because the older and people have seen the war, the last civil war, and its devastating consequences, they naturally hesitate to support any military action against the Nigerian states that might waste their children. Because Sundibo business class is heavily invested in Nigeria outside the Bodan, they fervently believe in a united Nigeria, even if it marginalized politically. Consequently, a polarization of Sundibo between proponents of Biafra and proponents of restructuring of Nigeria exists. Both sides agonize in futility, giving the lukewarmness of the Nigerian leadership to either of their wishes. This is taking time. As President General of Organizing, I intend to extend my warm hand of paternity to IPOP and Masop. They are my children. I shall never desert them. Their struggle is my struggle, even if we do not completely agree with their methods. In warfare, there are two types of approach, coercion and diplomacy. I completely favor diplomacy. The hand of fellowship which Mr. President has extended to our leadership gives me immense confidence that we can tame rising tempers. No one is listening to the other. Somehow we believe that our present situation can only be explained by marginalization and hatred. My people. The time for lamentation is over. Our continued cry of marginalization has become still. No one is listening to us anymore. I take up the challenge of this onerous assignment, <coughs> confident in the fact that I know the Indigo that has to be sent. I am aware that in the DNA of the average Igbo person are both strands of ingenuity, resourcefulness, intelligence, and the ability to survive and thrive in the face of various odds and challenges. This is our gift from Almighty God, which has served us well again and again. We will constitute the arteries and the veins upon which the Nigerian economy thrives. The head of the political division of the American Embassy once said that we will constitute the largest block of highly educated black population in the United States, and that they are all in significant professional occupations. He stated that even people in America say 40% of their earnings, it will be more than half of the total annual oil revenue of Nigeria. As an economist, I know that at this point in our quest for development, it is paramount to change the Ubo side from our propensity for heavy investment, primarily in real estate, to setting up industries and factories with the potentials for wealth creation. Such production units will offer jobs and incomes to our youths 
and grow the Igbo economy. The factories I must point out should, of course, be cited in Igbo land and not elsewhere. I think there is a type of graphic in here. Uh, something has been omitted in that last page. And, um, and I go for science, as we have done it before. We built a factory in Nigeria, Niger Sam in Calabria. The second brewery in Nigeria, the Golden Guinness Brewery in Umayyad. The first building material industry in Nigeria, Tonas Asbestos and Iron and Steel Parts in MN. The Potakot Michelin Tiles and Legalism. The first indigenous university in Nigeria, the University of Nigeria. During this time, the World Bank recognized Southeastern Nigeria as the fastest growing economy in Africa. We can do it again. As you go away from this inaugural meeting of Ohane's National Executive Committee, I want you to be able to go with the confidence that you have inaugurated the beginning of a new era for Ohane's. A new era of transparency and accountability. An era for the repatriation of Igbo capital for the building of a new economic infrastructure for us. An era of sustained and active fight for the restructuring of our federation, an era of a strong and all evolving organism. On my part as President General, I promise that I shall stand up for you. I will fight for you. I am ready to sacrifice for you, and if necessary, die. I pray for your support. I ask for your prayers. May the Almighty God help us. Thank you for your kind attention.